Hi there, uh, Chris here with Simply Nutrients, and today we're going to be talking about the eight signs that you may be magnesium deficient. So how do you know if you're magnesium deficient? Uh, the first way if you're really deficient is to take a test. You can do that through your doctor, or I'll put a link in the description below that you can use a reputable online lab. The reason I put an asterisk by testing is you may say, I'm turning this video off right now because my test was normal. So hold the phone or computer or whatever here, don't do that, um, and I'll tell you why. Magnesium is used for over 400 biological processes. You know, everything from helping to regulate blood sugar, blood pressure, making bone, uh, making DNA, um, obviously muscles and nerves, you know, think about cramping and other things like that. So only 1% of the available magnesium approximately in your body is in your blood serum at any one time, and that's what you're testing. So if you're really deficient, it will show up, but you can still be deficient even if your test is normal. And so forgive me, I know that can be frustrating, sounds slightly ridiculous, but I don't make the bodies, I just talk about them. So let's jump in. Uh, we talked a little bit about magnesium, but let's finish off that discussion. So magnesium is an essential mineral and an essential element. So when we talk about elements, our bodies don't make elements. We have to ingest what we need from elements like magnesium. So that would be through magnesium rich foods or a supplement or potentially both. Um, if your magnesium level gets too low, your body pulls magnesium from your cells, your organs, uh, your bones. And if magnesium gets too high or too low, you can also have severe cardiac problems. The good news is magnesium is water soluble and most people's functioning kidneys do a great job if you were to have too much magnesium. So if you do have any kind of kidney disease or your kidneys don't function at 100%, uh, you'll wanna avoid taking magnesium. So how many people are deficient? It's always hard to tell. And honestly, I, I hate when people come out and say, well, 80% of the population is deficient. Cause I ask them, well, how do you know that? Via extrapolation and some testing and based on Western diets, so for United States, maybe North America, if you will, the experts estimate all 50% may be de somewhat deficient in magnesium. So you have to give or take some on that again, because there's no way to test everyone. So let's jump in and talk about some of these symptoms in our top eight. So the first symptom is low energy level. And I want to say some of these symptoms will be somewhat generic. If you have a low energy level, go see your doctor, please. There's a lot of things that could be, and it may or may not be magnesium. But if you remember back to high school in, in one of your classes, they talked about how energy was formed. And that's through a molecule called the energy molecule or ATP. So magnesium plays a key part in your body making ATP. And if you're making enough ATP as you should, you'll feel great. If you're not, you may be magnesium deficient and that may be part of the problem. But again, you know, please see your doctor, um, but that's a good one to be aware of. Um, the other, the next one, number two, let's talk about pregnancy. So a lot of women get morning sickness. Um, it's very natural in pregnancy and we thank all the women out there for going through everything they did to bring us into the world. If you're a pregnant woman or know a pregnant woman that's had severe morning sickness, there's been multiple studies that have shown that there is most likely a magnesium deficiency. So that's something to talk to your doctor about. Um, you know, maybe anywhere from 400 to 800 milligrams of, mag of magnesium can really be helpful. And it's shown to reduce that severe morning sickness, maybe back to normal morning sickness. So please don't get your hopes up. There is no cure for morning sickness, but if it's very severe, um, a magnesium deficiency may be part of that. And that's because that wonderful life inside of you is taking all sorts of things um, away from your body into theirs. So number three, uh, insomnia. If you're not sleeping well, you know, you may be using melatonin or other things, and there may be a lot of other factors there, but one thing that multiple studies have also shown is that magnesium is a key part of sleep. And especially if combined with melatonin, you know, you might take 400 to 800 milligrams before bedtime. And again, with melatonin, that can really help not just falling asleep faster, but also staying asleep longer there can be uh, magnesium deficiency associated with, you know, some of that stress and lack of sleep. Um, it's a great, really inexpensive way to solve that problem. Uh, we've seen many patients, many, um, really solve a lot of their sleep issues just with magnesium alone. 
So again, if you're having more severe sleep issues, maybe sleep apnea or the things, uh, that's a time to maybe think about a sleep test and talk to your doctor about that. Number four, kind of dovetails in with the sleep piece, is muscle aches and cramps. So magnesium and potassium in concert are really key to eliminating some of those. And magnesium specifically, um, you know, a good magnesium supplement should make those go away. And a lot of times those will happen at night. Like you may be in bed and get that horrendous Charlie horse that wakes you up and you can't believe a muscle can feel that bad. Um, magnesium should be able to help with that. Number five, you know, another big one that you may or may not be familiar with is constipation. So our bodies have a great safety valve with magnesium. And if you take too much of it, you may get diarrhea. But constipation can sometimes be not enough of it. So that's something where, again, there are multiple symptoms around that. So, you know, talk with your doctor, maybe a lot going on with your gut, but absent of other things, sometimes constipation is related to a magnesium deficiency. I want to say if you do get diarrhea, though, you should reduce the magnesium dosage, probably back to 10 to 30% of the original dose that caused diarrhea. And that should be approximately the right amount and that diarrhea should go away. Number six, oh, we're going to combine a couple here, but tachycardia or fast heart rate. Um, calcium tends to make your heart contract, whereas magnesium tends to make your heart relax. So whether we're talking about um, arrhythmias and even, you know, AFib, you know, some of those arrhyth arrhythmias can be correlated through a mag magnesium deficiency. Again, let me emphasize, if you're having a heart attack or things like that, that's not the time to just pop magnesium and go back to work. That's the time to go straight to the hospital. You know, don't pass go, don't collect anything else, go straight there. But there's been a lot of research around heart disease prevention and just a magnesium deficiency. So it's a really easy way um, that if you are having any strange heart flip flops or maybe you have an arrhythmia, you know, if you haven't tried some magnesium on top of talking with your doctor about, you know, the right things to do, um, there's a lot of heart health and heart issues that have, I don't want to say been solved, but have been supported uh, by magnesium. Um, speaking of that, let's talk about high blood pressure. Um, there's no miracle cure for high blood pressure, a lot of prescription drugs out there, but even if you're taking a blood pressure medication, uh, you may benefit from taking 400 to 800 um, milligrams of magnesium, especially at bedtime. You know, that can a lot of times take that blood pressure down, and that may allow you at some point to reduce the amount of prescription drugs you're taking. Again, make sure you talk to your doctor about that. Um, you can look at the results and see um, there's been a lot of, again, studies and science around magnesium and the heart. Number seven, numbness and tingling. So if you get numbness and tingling in some of your extremities, especially fingers and toes, magnesium is a key piece of, of nerve function. So there may be other things that are going on, but if you don't have enough magnesium and your deficiency gets bad enough, you may experience tingling in your toes, in your hands, especially in your fingers. Uh, go to your doctor right away. There can be a lot of other things that is too, but consider eating a lot more magnesium rich foods. And that can be a great thing to do. And I'll have another video on what those magnesium foods are. So hit the subscribe button below, a shameless plug and the bell link next to it. And when that video comes out, you can check that out too. So again, with, with the numbness and tingling, if you do have that reduced kidney function, definitely don't take magnesium for that, okay? Um, the last thing, if you've been diagnosed with osteopenia, which is the precursor to osteoporosis, magnesium is really a key part of building bones. Um, if you're deficient, it can even be being taken away from your bones, but it combined with calcium is a key part of how you build bones. And if you don't have enough magnesium, you won't be able to, even if you're taking enough calcium, magnesium helps as really the engine to get the calcium into the bone. So if you're low on magnesium, you won't be putting it away. And if you're susceptible to osteoporosis, you're more likely to get there faster, even if you're taking calcium because of that. So you know, talk to your doctor, get on a great plan, but magnesium and calcium together are a great combination in the right ratios to prevent and hold off osteoporosis as long as possible. So there's your top eight. If you like this video, 
please hit subscribe below and hit the bell next to it. That'll notify of any other videos that come out. Appreciate your time and I hope this was helpful.